Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This ends segment one of episode four. We'll return with segment two right after this. This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. An atlas is a collection of maps. A historic atlas is a collection of maps, photos, and illustrations that tells the reader about what happened in the past and where things happened. For the reader learning about the history of railroads, I recommend National Geographic's Historical Atlas of the United States. Many aspects of American history are beautifully illustrated here, organized around themes like immigration and industrialization. Railroad history is included here, with simple yet poignant maps illustrating the expansion and then the decline of railroads in the United States through time. Readers can see the expanding effects of the transcontinental railroad and the erasing of many railroads after World War II when automobiles, trucks, and airlines sapped away business from many of the railroads of the time. The atlas also contains regional maps of the United States. If you want to see graphic illustrations of railroad history, get your hands on a copy of National Geographic's Historical Atlas of the United States. You can probably find one at your local library. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This is Episode 4, Segment 2. In the video clip about railroads in Southern Oregon, we learned some important historical events. Anytime we look at history, we're seeing the need to use action words that reflect events of the past. In English, words conveying action and being are called verbs. In Episode 3, we reviewed the main way of changing present tense verbs to past tense. Then we ramped up a bit, for some of you, by using irregular verbs, those that don't form the past tense, by adding D or ED. I left a simple list on my website and provided a link to a much longer list on EnglishPage.com. What do you do when you want to show a change in the past in relation to another past event? That's the function we're learning today. Let's think about the video clip we just saw. There were some conditions that existed before the railroad was constructed in Southern Oregon. For example, the building of the Transcontinental Railroad. A simple past tense would simply state that the Transcontinental Railroad was built. That clearly shows that it happened in the past. But if we use the fact in relation to the building of the railroad in Southern Oregon, which happened later but still in the past, the simple past tense will simply not do the job. We're going to show the relationship between these two facts. The Transcontinental Railroad was completed in 1869, linking the East Coast with the West Coast. There was no railroad joining Southern Oregon to the East Coast until 1883. As shown here, there doesn't seem to be much of a connection. For the first sentence to show that this is a condition that existed before the second one, we're going to have to use the verb in the past perfect tense. The term perfect, as used here, simply means that something already happened in the past and it stopped happening. It's finished, like the Transcontinental Railroad. So they had already built the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869. The two words, had built, make up the verb in this sentence. Both words are needed for the past perfect tense. Now let's look at the second half of what we're trying to say. There was no railroad in southern Oregon linking it to the East Coast until 1883. Now let's put these two thoughts together to show the relationship between the two. They had already built the, Transcon uh, excuse me, the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869, linking the East Coast with the West Coast. But there was no railroad in southern Oregon linking it to the East Coast until 1883. As an intermediate English learner, you probably already know about using the conjunction but to join two phrases. However, without using the past perfect had built, the sentence would not clearly communicate the relationship in time between the two events. Let's look at another way of saying the same thing. 
The Transcontinental Railroad had already been built 14 years earlier when Southern Oregon was finally connected to the rail in 1883. continue with when communicating about events in the past, it's often necessary to use language for the function of fixing two or more events in time while showing a relationship between the two. That's when we use the word had as part of the verb to form the past perfect tense. Now, the word had is the past tense of the word have, but here it's used as a helping verb joining to the participle of the word build. Used this way, the word had has nothing to do with possessing something. Let's go back to a slide. Let's look at another example of, from the video. It was stated that people in the past had to endure days of bumpy rides in a stagecoach to reach southern Oregon from the nearest big cities. It was also stated that this situation changed when the railroad was completed into southern Oregon. People had endured bumpy travel for days on stagecoaches to reach southern Oregon from big cities in Oregon and California. Once the railroad was built, they traveled the same distance in a few hours by train. Adding had to the verb endured makes it clear that this situation only existed before the building of the railroad in southern Oregon. In the second sentence, the past tense verb traveled puts this situation after the first one, yet still in the past. Had functions here as a helping verb. No helping verb was needed in the second sentence. If this all seems confusing or just too hard to remember, don't worry about that. Now that it's in your awareness, you'll more likely to notice it when you hear it or read it. And that's the value of watching the video clips and reading about a topic. Being able to use the verb in the past perfect form will help you communicate complex thoughts in a way that makes it clear what you're trying to say. Congratulations! You've just seen how you can use the past perfect verb tense to show a relation between two events that both happened in the past. This ends segment two of episode four of Ramping Up Your English. We'll return with a less bumpy segment right after this. This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. If you want to go back in time to the very birth of trains and railroads, you want to read the book The History of Railways by Colin Heinsohn from Scholastic Books. The book's format reminds me of eyewitness books with small illustrations and ample text. English learners will find that the text is very challenging and there's a lot of text on each page. The illustrations are clear, providing the context to help readers decipher the text. Historical photos depict important events like the Golden Spike Ceremony that joined the Union Pacific and the Central Pacific Railroads as America's first intercontinental railroad. There's a great amount of information in the history of railways. Readers will stretch their English reading skills, but you'll also be re rewarded by a deeper knowledge of trains and railroads. Meanwhile, you'll be ramping up your English proficiency, especially in reading. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This is segment three of episode four. In segment one, we saw a video clip about bringing the railroad to Southern Oregon. In the second segment, we learned how to show how two events in the past are related using a verb in the past perfect tense. You can learn more about using past perfect tense at our website. Visit letscreate.org, go to our episode four page, and then follow the link to englishpage.org. Com. If you're highly motivated to take a more grammar-centric approach to learning English, this is a great site. For a more thematic approach, I invite you to watch this video clip about excursion trains. <laughs> 